welcome everybody to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Thanks for coming along and hanging out with us. We hope you got a cold drink. You're enjoying yourself, having a good time. We're here. We've all got a drink. Nate Nate is still on uh, dry January, so he's going NA, and he'll share that with us uh, here in just a minute. But I am Tim Dennis. This is Beer Guys Radio. Brian Hewitt, how you doing? I'm all right. It's been a long week already, but I'm doing yeah. I'm doing good. I'm here. I, I showed up, Tim. How's it going, yeah. Tim? You know, it's been it's been a herding cats kind of week, as they mm. say, or you know, eating soup with a fork, you know, all of those kind of things. It's been one of those kind of weeks, but we're making it through. It's a lot of it's been good stuff. It's just been chaotic. So I'm hanging in there. I'm hanging in there. Mo Mike Nate, how the heck are you? I'm doing well. Glad to uh Glad to be back on the show this week and excited to talk yeah. about all the hottest craft beer news. Beer. Beer and other beer. related things. Correct. So, y'all, this is a momentous episode for us. Uh, in all of these years that we've been doing it, we finally made it significant to uh, many of our friends. And to Atlanta, this is episode 420. It is. It is. So we made it to episode 420. And uh, yeah, so for all those that celebrate, happy holiday, use this as an excuse, you know, to, to blaze it, if that's your your cup of tea. I I don't partake, and it's not, it's not from anything like necessarily thinking it's bad or anything like that. It just doesn't agree with me. It just doesn't, uh, doesn't do what all my friends who do partake say that it does for them. It doesn't do those things for me. So I leave it alone. I'll have a couple beers and chill out. That'll that'll be fine. So, Brian, I think I know from uh, past science experiments that it uh, it doesn't agree with you very well either, does it? No, no. It's it's very odd. It uh, it inflames my sinuses whenever I do it. I, and I say that as a guy who smokes cigars and has yeah. no issue with those, and I'm I'm not even going to claim to be allergic to stuff. But I there's a chance that I have some issue with that. I've also tried some of the gummies and gotten yeah like uh basically felt sick afterwards not high just sick and it was like you know what this is this is not for me unfortunately because i am a little jealous of the people who enjoy that i would it sounds great i wouldn't i would love to join you but i'm gonna stick with beer uh so you know what i'm fine i'm well served by beer and whiskey bourbon you know i've got fair enough so i got i can cry into my beer bottles Blind Neil that's hanging out with us on YouTube, and he said uh, he's a cannabis guy. He said he had to quit booze, booze a few years back. It was killing me. And, and, you know, that that's fair, man. If it's not if it's not working for you, um, cannabis doesn't work for me. If you're in the booze, you give it up. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Enjoy your relaxation time, however you wish to do it. But on that note, Brian, yes. there was some cannabis talk on beer Twitter this week. That is correct. Uh, Mark Gallo, who is uh, a guy that uh, does a lot of talking about the the industry, he's a co- he's a co packer. He works for a co packer, and he he put out a poll. It's an interesting poll. He says, in ten years, bars in the U.S. will have what beverage more on draft and or tap? And it, the two options were non alcoholic beer and cannabis related beverages. Which one do you think won? Or which one would you say would be the well, most likely? Be- because of the topic that we're having this, you know what? If I were to vote on that, and I will say, I'm specifically referring to cannabis beverages here in yes. saying this. I would definitely say in a beer, except caveat. There's so many caveats to this, Brian. They don't do a lot of in a beer on draft because of the issues with it. So, so that is that. Are we taking that into account there? Um, so I, I would guess I think both are unlikely to be on taps, to be honest with you. After thinking about it a fair amount, I, I am inclined to agree with you simply because I think cannabis beverages are so regulated and so controlled that you're not going to see them on draft because that's such a willy nilly, hard to measure kind of way of distributing yeah. it. And they're yeah. so controlled. I don't think you're ever going to see those where they're not prepackaged in very precise amounts. So I think that that's unlikely. I think NA beer, because of issues with uh, sanitation, just keeping it clean, I don't see a lot of that happen. I think we'll see some, but I think there'll be a real challenge because you've 
not only do you have to uh, have to worry about the kegs going off and no alcohol to pr- protect against the bad stuff, you got to worry about the tap lines being clean too. So uh, right, right, you know. So that's a uh, blind Neil here. He made the comment. He's like, they're getting to be more more hybrid drinks. He said THP, THC infused beers and hard stuff. So right now they can't infuse THC into something with actual alcohol in it. But they are doing Syria Brewing's a great example. They have totally non-alcoholic beer, 0.0. That was very important yeah. to be able to do it. Uh, but they're THC and CBD infused. So is it both, Brian? If, if that were to go on tap, then that would be both NA beer and cannabis, right? Well, yeah, I think most of the cannabis beverages, by, by definition, are NA. So actually, the real winner for this, regardless of what happens, is NA beer because, oh, I guess if it's just cannabis water. So, yeah, but it, it would doesn't be have both to be an NA beer, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. A good, that's a good point. Uh, I look like Mo Mike Nate had something to say. Did, did you want to throw oh. something in there? Uh, well, two things. One, um, Tim had just mentioned Syria. Uh, go go check out BGR.show. It's episode 281. Uh, when we had them all last on the show. Good and then uh, what I was going to say is that, you know, when when you had the terpene infused beers, I know for a lot of restaurants, their complaints were, well, not only did it smell across the room whenever you poured one, their draft lines were getting, getting tainted with uh, yeah. that overwhelming smell. And so that might be why the cannabis on draft isn't as viable because actually they could cause issues with their terp lines. Yeah, it's yeah. a good point. Can you and use we, those taps again, just legally? Like once they've been, once point. they've gone cannabis, could they ever be used for anything else, or do you have to burn them out in the field somewhere? I guess a lot more cleaning though. And one more comment from uh, Blind Neil here. He notes he's in Canada, and the rules there are very ah, different. Yes. So you know, we always yeah. make the assumption that everybody in the world is American. But he did note that he's in Canada and we, they have different. Rules. That's a fair point. So, it's, it's completely legal up there, right? Just across the board everywhere. Yeah. Just I smoke think. them if you got them. Smoke them and drink them if you got them. Just rock okay. on. So, nice. Brian, with all that said, what were the results of Mark's poll? Oh, yeah. Uh, interestingly, the uh, cannabis won 54% to 46%. So people think that... Uh, in 10 years, we're going to have a lot of cannabis on draft or cannabis beverages of some kind, whether it be water, or cannabis. I don't know. I don't know what else it w- okay. could be. So something okay. like that juice, uh, cannabis beer or like non-alcoholic beer. So, uh, yeah, some kind of I, can of beverage. Huh? Yeah. And, and that surprised him. He's like he he doesn't he wasn't expecting that result. And so this is like his his follower base involves people just in the industry of the beverage industry in general like everything from the non alcoholic like the various sodas the the hype yeah. uh energy drinks and everything like beer people too like i know he goes and meets up with big beer marketing people uh around the country so uh yeah apparently people think that's going to happen i'm skeptical i think that, that we're so uptight about all of it and everything's in dispensaries i just don't see the draft thing happening like not I think it'll be without tough. Big changes. Now, so, yeah. If NA did take off more or continues to flow, um, there was an article recently that said uh, NA beer was kind of a fad that low alcohol beer is going to take its place, you know? And uh, I'm not sure I 100% agree with that because there's definitely going to be people that, that don't want 2%. You know, they just don't want alcohol at all. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but if NA continues to hold some market share, and we have to remember that although NA itself has had impressive growth for NA beer, it's still a very tiny drop in the bucket of the overall beer and beverage market. Um, sure. But assuming there's demand there, I could see to where we develop tap cleaning procedures that are more in line more conducive to having an na beer on tap you know it's going to have to be more stringent than what you do with alcohol beer you know with with beers with alcohol in them but that's something i mean we put soda we put soda on yeah, tap lines you know things like that you have to clean them out now now granted we have a little more um food in beer i guess for well maybe not i mean if you got a sugary soda you got food there for bacteria to chomp on as well there's a lot of preservative chemicals in sodas like this if there's a laundry list of chemicals in there so it's not 
Like it's not something as clean as just like malts and sugars and that sort of thing. I think that I think what what will beat both of those if things keep going the way it's trending now is just hop water. Like th- that just I hop just, water, yeah. just hop okay. water. I think that's I I expect at some point soon that there will always just be a hop water tap at every every place that has taps. So just that'll be an option because it's hugely popular and it's easily. You know, it's something that anybody can probably get into. Like, it's the non-alcoholic choice. I guess some people aren't into hops, but it's so popular. Like, it's and it's so inexpensive to make. I can't see why they wouldn't do it as long as it sells. So, yeah. So, Nate, as you're going through your dry January here, let's say you are out at a bar, and we're let's fast forward our ten years here. And this bar has an NA IPA on tap, and they have a hop water. And you know the hop water to be a good hop water. What are you more likely to choose? Hop water all day. I mean, okay. but I also, yeah. I thoroughly enjoy hop water. Like when we had Hop Locker on the show, I really enjoyed tasting their products and going through, they did the hop water and they did the hot tea. Right. Um, so given those two options, hop water all day. Okay. Brian, how about you, man? Would you go hop water in a beer? I probably still would. I probably still favor in a beer. I, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm kind of, Hit and miss with hop water. Sometimes I really enjoy it. Sometimes I don't. And I've had a Bitburger does a great non-alcoholic beer, and I could yeah. I would be happy to drink that just about any time. So that kind of scratches that particular itch. And one of the things people have talked about with with the the NA beers is like it's it's something that's there. That if if beer has become part of your ritual or part of your habit, having something like that 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 gives you the 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 aroma, the carbonation, the flavor, and fits in with the whole ritual of the situation. It just I find that like at times when I would normally have a beer, if I grab a non-alcoholic beer, I am satisfied by that. It's not about okay. whatever little bit of like buzz or chemicals I'd be getting from it. It's just a little bit it's a lot about the flavor and the feeling and everything else going on with it. So yeah. So that we've talked about that a little bit in the past, but I would definitely say in my younger days that I was seeking out the alcohol there, you know, and Mm -hmm. I'm looking for, I I wanted to, I wanted to get my buzz on and that's become much, much less of a priority to me. And the alcohol, there are certain beers that are very high ABV that that alcohol definitely contributes to the flavor of the beer and is part of the character of what I like about that beer. Uh, But I've seen people still that complain this beer is only 5%. This beer is only, you know, four or what have you. And I just don't care. I don't generally, unless I know I am ordering a big beer, I don't even look at the ABV most of the time. So if it's a beer that sounds good to me, I'm going to, I'm going to drink it. I think we've got the misconception a bit here in the U S because we're very value driven that we, we determine the value of the beer is the ABV. That's the quality there. It's actually the ingredients. It should be, it's the yeah. hops, it's the grain, but a lot, the hops really these days, but it's the hops, the grains, like the, the alcohol It's ethanol. It's like, you could get that anywhere. You could, you could throw a little extra in yourself, but it's everything else in there. That's really driving the, the price of it. So like, yeah, that's that's the value, really. It's not not the ABV. It's the quality, the flavor, and uh, we've got our we've got our signals crossed with that. I think uh, just and I guess that if you prioritize just getting hammered, then maybe yes. The in terms of effectiveness, then the higher ABV thing is is what you're looking for. But if you just like beer and you like the flavor of it, it's it that shouldn't be really part of the equation as to determining if it's if it's more valuable or less than the next beer. You know. Yeah, and granted, a higher ABV beer will have more ingredients or more malt, I should say, in it. Uh, but you can have a lower alcohol, heavily hopped IPA that they're going to put any money they saved on grain, they'll spend on hops there. So, yes, you know, it definitely could be. Uh, I can see, I can see the the thought process somewhat, but it's not always the case. And I don't think that you can look at a beer that's a lower ABV and automatically assume it's a lower value beer simply because of that. I definitely agree with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So, Brian, tying into that, though, you know, talking about cannabis as we're 420 in it this week, uh, there is some chatter out there that says cannabis consumption could be cannibalizing craft beer drinking. 
Yeah, yeah. So there's a research in both the U.S. and Canada is showing that cannabis users are reporting that they are drinking less. And we've already had a comment in the show to that yeah, effect. Blind Neil here to say that's the truth. Yeah, that's right. And the percentage of users reporting that they are drinking less seems to be increasing, at least in Canada. That's they've been tracking that longer because it's been legal in Canada longer than it has been here. Currently, 22.8 percent of cannabis users in Canada and 36 percent of users in the U.S. say they are drinking less. And nearly half of those respondents reported that they are re replacing some of their alcohol consumption with cannabis or some or all, you know, one of those things. This does sound like uh, some of the stats we've heard previously from states that have already legalized cannabis. But the uh, the researchers point out that these studies are not backed by any control data, meaning it's all self-reported and it could be swayed by, you know, what people people saying what they think others want to hear or what they should you know what they ideally want to be doing they, for example people are notoriously bad at self reporting how much they eat for diet studies even when they're trying to be you know trying very hard to be honest you just forget stuff that's the thing so uh, you know additionally as we all know you hear it a lot correlation is not causation the uh, the changes may have no direct connection to the cannabis consumption it could be part of overall trends towards greater health and wellness awareness, that sort of thing. But uh, uh, like I said, in, in in our case, we have somebody who has actually replaced it because, you know, the one thing was bad, really bad for them. The other thing was, you know, much better for them overall and uh, help them achieve their uh, their health goals and uh, have okay. a good time. Yeah. All so right. there, there we go. go. So maybe yeah. it is. Maybe it's not. It's it's a little hard to know just yet, but maybe. It'll be interesting to see how it continues to go. I know there's in, there has been talk of that as cannabis has been legalized more places here in the U.S. There's been more talk in the U.S. and and I think also people are drink people are drinking less in general. You know from from what we've heard there, so that could have an impact on it. But it sounds like a, some of the users did say that specifically that there there's some replacement there going on. So it's not just that they're drinking yes. less, but they are doing some replacing there interesting stuff so i really think it's interesting yeah. that we've got the a young generation like you, you usually think of the young people as the ones getting crazy we've got the young mm -hmm. people being the most most health conscious of all the generations what currently. are these everybody people up to i don't i don't are they rebelling against our rebellion and going back to i, I don't get it i just like let's eat salads <laughs> and take I, long be... walks in the on the uh in the forest or i i don't know it's crazy crazy let's be healthy and and find our 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 chi our yes. thing in our shoulder and all that yeah. yes yeah. let's our let's all align our chakras here unlock uh, every chakra yes man i guess it's not a bad thing you know there's so much stuff going on with teaching people to be kinder smarter more accepting and that definitely doesn't make for a worse society but uh i enjoyed my hell raising days when i was younger uh maybe sometimes that i'm like oh, okay i shouldn't have done that you know and i and every now and then i see friends from years ago that remind me of things i did that i'm like yeah yeah okay yeah i shouldn't have done that but i had a lot of fun i did not die i was never arrested so and you I weren't punched successful. in the face that many times only it's a true few. that's that's not necessarily true but <laughs> you know the other things are factual that one maybe not so i i i cause more trouble than 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 i deserve not mischief let me use that term. Not 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 too bad a trouble. But that being said, moving along, so I don't have to talk about my behavior in the past any longer. Guys, let's talk about our beers of the week. Nate, we're going to start with you in your dry January. What is yeah. on tap for you this week? All right. So this week I am starting off with Peroni zero zero. Not a not the zero point five percent that is legal in the states uh, to be considered alcohol free or non alcoholic. Uh, but this is a true zero zero, and honestly, when you sip into it, when you take a sip, it tastes like Peroni. It's, it's a Peroni, huh? It's like it's kind of like the Heineken zero zero. It's pretty wild, or to a slight extent, even the Guinness zero zero. Pretty wild how some of these imports just have really nailed their flavor profile so well that even with zero alcohol in it, it's just it tastes. If side by side, probably tell a different side by side, right. but stand alone. It's really hard to say, oh, I'm not actually drinking a Peroni. Uh, and then I decided that because I am drinking a non-alcoholic Peroni, that I should try a non-alcoholic spaghetti. And so I've got a bottle of Liars Aperol 
uh, non-alcoholic Aperol with some lemon juice. And uh, later in the show, I'm going to whip up a spaghetti and hang one of those. Madness, madness, madness. Sure. You know, I, I think I may have mentioned this to Brian before, but I'm going to come out in public and state this. I do not think N.A. Guinness tastes as close to Guinness as a lot of other people claim that it does. I think that it is substantially different in taste and body from real deal Guinness. Mm-hmm. So I've had the Heineken Zero Zero. It, it nails it. There's a couple others that are on there. I don't think the, the Zero Zero Guinness is, is bad, but I do think it's substantially different from real Guinness. It's it's different. Yeah, it's yeah. different. It's good. What I really want to try, and I keep looking for it, and I've yet to find it, is uh, the shoot black, uh, black Butte Porter, the non-alcoholic mm. version. They yeah. use that uh, that the technology that allows you to make the make the the beer as kind of a really condensed syrup, and then kind of mix it with whatever level of alcohol you want. Kind of kind of as though it were a soft drink. I think that's roughly how the technology works. I'm like, it's been a long time since I looked at it, but. Are People we gonna say get, it's really good. Are we going to get a Deschutes freestyle machine where you can just dial Ooh. your beer in there? Ooh, that would be amazing. And now I that's think that what that's I want to see in 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. That would be great. And I think that the, the people behind the technology, I forget what it's called, basically allow for that. Like you could have different levels of, you could have a non-alcoholic version. You could have a session version. You could have the regular wow. version and maybe even have an extra oomph version if you wanted to. And that would be great. I'm like, I, I would like, you know, when you're ordering something off of uh, Uber Eats or whatever, would you like to add a little extra meat to your pizza or whatever? I'm like, would you like yeah. to add an extra extra little shot of uh, booze to your to your, uh, you know, your beer? Like it's a it's a dollar upcharge. So I'm like, yeah, let me do that. You know, that that sort of thing. That would be kind of great. Go I'd up to it. the machine. Touch the little touch screen. I'm be like, I'm going to start with this Imperial Stout. We're going to barrel age that, and I'll take a little <laughs> coffee and vanilla in there. Mm-hmm. Well, we have talked to uh, people that that do the fast aging, so theoretically, you could almost do something like that. I guess the fast aging isn't exactly. I think that's totally that different. Fast, but yeah, yeah, I appreciate your thought <laughs> there, but I think that's totally different, Brian. Totally. They'd have different. to pre-make totally the different. sir. They'd have to pre-age it and make it into a yeah, very yeah. condensed beer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, I get, I get it. Yeah. So, Brian, what are you drinking this week? Oh, yeah, yeah. I am. I to get things started, I'm drinking things out of a Hemperer glass, New Belgium's uh, Hemperer. For those who don't remember that, it was a beer that was out for a little while. That when you opened it, it everyone in that the room would turn their heads, trying to figure out who was smoking the the weed in in the the room. But uh, I don't have any Hemperer because it's gone because that uh, that has passed away. But I started off with a uh, pregame of Hot Butcher and Perennial Artisans uh, collaboration called Thoroughly New. It was very nice. Uh, wasn't wasn't really super dank, but uh, it was as close as I had to something that was dank. And right now I am working on the, the, the tail end of Halfway Crooks Berliner Vice, which is quite, quite nice. I'm uh, very happy with that. And uh, after this, I'm which I'm going to have to get into pretty soon, I will be getting into some neutral ground Mannequin de Belgique. I All guess right. how you say that. It's a Belgian triple. So that is, that's the next thing. So that you, is Tim. the thing. I'm, you know what? I've got um, a little bit of Berliner Weiss from Halfway Crooks. That's what I'm sipping on. This is one of my favorite Berliners that I've ever had. Uh, our buddy Stan from Fort Worth, Texas was in town last weekend. So we got to hi- hang out with him for a while. We went down to Halfway Crooks and it just so happened uh, that the beer gods shined upon me and they had some Berliner there. So I got a six pack to go, shared it around so we could all enjoy this. And I, I love the bottles. They're in the stubby bottles. You know, for those watching mm-hmm. the live stream, you can see there. But I like these bottles a lot. And the Berliner is really nice. It's a it's tart. It's not knock your teeth out sour. It's tart, you know, just really, really good flavor there. So I enjoy this one a lot. Super refreshing when it's 173 degrees out like it is today. So I'm enjoying this. Didn't we determine maybe Stan looked it up when he was here? Like that was like the authentic OG way of bottling a Berliner. Did I, I don't I remember? Like, I don't remember that. Maybe he did, but I don't. I don't recall that. I, I, it seems like there was a comment about some original throwback Berliner that it was also bottled in that stubby that stubby bottle. So I, I don't know. A little stubby. So, to me, it's got a little bit of the funk that reminds me of like a lambic light, like a super low. There is like, some funk there. Yeah. yeah, like a very like if you took a lot of the tart out, you 
not watered down. I, I don't want to say watered down because that sounds bad, but like a super session lambic, you know, even though lambics are session lambic in there in themselves are actually pretty light, but it feel it tastes like that. I really, really like it. So it's uh, it's just a great beer, an extremely well made beer. Yes, it is very, very yep. good. Very, very good. Brian, you know, it's it's hot, man. We talked about it. It's hot. But something that goes along well with the heat is a uh, beer and baseball. Man, people go out, have a good time. And, you know, if you're thinking of beer and or baseball, then our friends Terrapin Brewery Atlanta have got you covered. We've got a fun one on deck this week for them. So they collaborate a lot with Braves players for various beers that they've had. They've collaborated with Chipper Jones in the past. They've collaborated with Jeff Francoeur. And they've got a new one on deck here. So next up to the plate, Diving Catch Kolsch brewed in collaboration with Andrew Jones. So this new brew just tapped, and it's a perfect beer for summer. Refreshing and crushable, Brian. But if you're not feeling a Kolsch right now, they've also got a Schwartz Stop Schwartz beer on tap. That's only 4.8%, so another one you can in, enjoy. Uh, or maybe you want to go for a Southside Shandy brewed with passion fruit. A little passion fruit shandy there. If that's your cup of tea, rock on and have a good time with it. Of course, they've also got plenty of Los, Los Bravos Mexican lager on hand. So head on out to Truist Park, stop by the Terrapin Brewery Atlanta, and grab you a beer. Tell them the beer guy sent you. And thank you to Terrapin for sponsoring the show. Right. And, uh, you know, can you believe, Tim, that we are closing in on the 4th of July already? It's like a it's crazy. It's like it a week away or so. Uh, well, we are. And uh, if you're looking for something fun to do on the 4th of July weekend, Truck and Tap Duluth is throwing their red, white and brew party starting at 8 p.m. You can expect live music, drink specials and, of course, a fine food truck to go along with it. A little later in the month, other Truck and Tap locations are holding a luau party, which promises you a uh, cocktail specials and all the vibrant island vibes you can possibly handle. Drink, uh, dates and times may vary or will vary and uh, make sure you check out the details on your favorite location social media and you can find all their social media links at truckandtap.com but now let's talk about my truck and tap beer picks for the week as we like to say here on beer guys radio stats are for summer and it's 100 degrees here so i'm pretty sure it's summer and for that reason, my pick at Truck and Tap Woodstock is Prairie's French Toast Brunch, a barrel-aged pastry stout with maple syrup, cinnamon, and vanilla. If that doesn't say summer, I don't know what does. I mean, that is pure summer right there. At Truck and Tap Duluth, my pick is Untitled Arts Chocolate Malt Amour Pastry Stout, a fine summer stout weighing in at a mere 10% ABV, the lightest selection of uh, my picks this week. At Truck and Tap Alpharetta, I'm not going to be able to pass up on Bond Brothers Haya, H-Y-A-W. It's an acronym. I didn't look into what it means, but it's a barrel-aged imperial coffee stout. It sounds like uh, the perfect beverage for getting a little reflected sunlight while you're sitting indoors next to the air conditioning. And finally, at Truck and Tap Lawrenceville, it's going to be Creature Comforts Dreaming in Slow Motion, a blend of barrel-aged stouts with vanilla. Of course, you don't have to go with my decadent picks for this week. There are plenty of beer options with ABVs in the single digits, not to mention wines, spirits, cocktails. The world is your oyster stout at Truck and Tap. And don't forget to check out what's up at truckandtap.com. And thank you to Truck and Tap for your support. Good stuff. Good stuff. Guys, I have a fun one here to go over. And this comes from a Vine Pair article that I saw. Mm. And it was talking about what is your Mount Rushmore of IPAs. So the, the author reached out to seven, as he put it, insightful beer voices. And this included uh, brewers as well as uh, beer uh, authors, you know, bloggers, writers, uh, you know, to book, book authors and such. So just a good sampling of people who know their beer. You know, they've been, been around the block a time or two and had a good time. Uh, one of those people being Mitch Still from New Realm Brewing, formerly of Stone Brewing, you know, friend of the show uh, here in Atlanta now. And they had Ryan Guthy, who's a co-founder of Wicked Weed Brewing, um, part of the panel as well. So all in, 18 beers received votes, with over half of those getting just one vote. So a single vote from a single person there. However, the top four seem to be pretty clear, pretty clear winners there on the list for the top four beers. Uh, the first one, Nate, have you looked at my notes? Do you know what we've got here yet? So, yeah, because yeah. I was reviewing okay. the article okay. in case 
you guys were going to ask me uh, what my in case there was a quiz. In yeah, in case well, was not a quiz not there. even really. Yeah. Oh my I was, god, I was, studying, test? I was <laughs> hoping it was an open article test. Yes, uh, right. No, uh, I was wondering if you were going to ask what my Mount Rushmore beers were, and spoiler alert: two of the top, uh, two of the most. Uh, Two of the top or would be Two on of the your top list ones well. were okay. ones we're going to we'll be on my back list to too. that, Nate. We'll yeah. we'll get back to that. So, in the number one spot, I think that most people who know beer probably would not be shocked at this one. Russian Rivers Pliny the Elder in the number one spot there. Uh, coming in at number two, uh, Alchemist Teddy Topper. Number three, Sierra Nevada Celebration, and number four. There's four on Mount Rushmore, right? Isn't there? there are. No, Isn't yes. that right? That's right. So, have you not uh, been? <laughs> I have. I have okay. actually. Yes. I just it's been it's been a while. I couldn't remember, you know, is it three, four, ten? Have they added to it, taken away, you know? So I don't right know. Now. We do have a mo mountain monument here in Georgia. They're trying very hard to get rid of. So I don't know if uh we because I was gonna say for us, I was gonna say what would be your stone mountain of beer, but I'm like, no, that's mm. no, that we're gonna stay away from that one. But anyhow. Uh, Treehouse Julius there in the number four spot. One I found really interesting, only from one person, and I definitely can't argue with this take, and this is from Mitch Steele. He mentioned Ballantine IPA, and that's, uh, Nate, I bet you may not even know of that beer, have never even nope. heard of it, have you? So I that have was, never heard of that. Talking about the OG of OGs there, that's the only American IPA that had survived Prohibition, and it was a beer that, as Mitch put it, inarguably... Uh, inspired Fritz Maytag to brew Anchor's Liberty L and Ken Grossman to brew Celebration. So I think everybody in the article probably interpreted what Mount Rushmore would be in their own way. Uh, because I tell you what, True House Julius, I think it's a fantastic beer. But if we're talking Mount Rushmore, to me, I'm looking at founding fathers kind of stuff. You know, what was the ones... That, that opened the doors, that got things going in that. So that would be kind of where, where I would go. And I think, um, you know, there, even Russian River and Alchemist are probably what I would call like second wave. Sierra Nevada as well, you know. So uh, Ballantine IPA probably probably deserves their, uh, uh, a place on there. But uh, I guess it's, it's all open to interpretation. There's no rules here. Nate, we're not being graded on this. There's there's no grades okay. on this, Good. so you can go wherever you want to go with it. So, Nate, I'm going to come back to you. What would be on your Mount Rushmore? I'll even say of beer. Now, you can okay. use all IPAs if you want to, but what's on your Mount Rushmore of beer? Well, considering I thought earlier about it just for IPAs, okay. I'm going to stick with IPAs. All right. And the very first beer I thought of was Russian River Pliny the Elder. Yeah. And the second beer I thought of was the Alchemist Heady Topper. Fair and enough. The third one I would do uh, would be Sweetwater IPA. Um, you know, we're talking OG and especially Georgia OG and, uh, and to a greater extent, like a, a larger regional brewery. I think Sweetwater IPA is one of those ones that just has been a while, been around a while. It's been consistently made. And now that they're starting to get wider national distribution, uh, everybody can experience that as well. And then the fourth one, I struggled with it because I wanted to say a vice presidential. Here we go. A vice presidential one would be uh, Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. Thanks. Okay. That was the gateway beer that got me into IPAs. And so even though it's not a full on IPA, I'm going to say it's a vice pre presidential. Uh, the Veep. Mount the Veep. Yeah. Okay. We'll give it a spot there. Maybe a little smaller behind the other, yes. the other three cans carved in there. Brian, you know, I'm coming at you next, man. What's on your Mount Rushmore? Yeah, I, I have a lot of appreciation for, and uh, Mitch is a smart guy, and he, leave it to him to to pick pick that up. And uh, they the they closed before closing was cool as a brewery in 1972. So it, the, they were around for 115 years. I say that just kind of tongue in cheek, but yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, they were they really really were OG 115 years and close to 1972. But uh, for IPA, it's going to be Russian Rivers, Pliny the Elder. Uh, Hetty Topper. I'm going to go with, uh, for, I, from my perspective, it's going to be 90 minute IPA from Dogfish Head, and it's going to be Sierra Nevada Celebration IPA with, without a question, without too much thought about it. Like, that just feels right to me. If I were going to do some sort of, if we were going to replace Stone Mountain with just an IPA bottles, 
I think I'd have to go Tropicalia, Sweetwater IPA. Uh, it's a little harder after that point in time, and I'm, I'm probably going to anger some people, but I would probably put I'd consider putting uh, Cherry Street Step and Razor up there because I have a lot of history loving that, and maybe Variants Cashmere uh, New England IPA on there. Uh, there I have, there's some other stuff I'm probably forgetting, but if I were going all like local stuff, those are some some mm. big ones for me. So it's it's from you know my own perspective and okay. Yeah, no, no, it's your no, mountain, Brian. It's yeah. your mountain. Yeah, and there's a lot of other stuff that I thought about. Inner Voices Memory Farm's great. Uh, I love Six Bridges Medlock. I love Torch uh, Torch Tops Hop de Leon. There have been some interesting one offs from the Hop Hut for Monday night, but one offs can't make it into a can't be chiseled into a mountain. Sorry, you're disqualified. So yeah, Tim, did did you give yours or did you are you? Done I haven't all, yet. Yeah. I haven't yet. So if we have to stick to IPAs, honestly, that's going to be tough for me because I'm not a huge IPA guy. But I could definitely say unquestionably Pliny the Elder gets a spot on it because that's a beer that even I enjoy not being an IPA guy. Uh, I can have a pint of it and really enjoy it and appreciate what it is. Uh, I've had it from the bottle several times and, you know, this definitely could have been situational, my enjoyment, but out at GABF at Fallen Rock Tap House, Pliny the Elder on draft. You know, that's just an experience. Great beer. You know, there's people that can run out to their neighborhood bar and do that. I'm not one of them. So for me, it was, you know, is a, a pretty significant experience. Uh, I think Hetty Topper, Hetty Topper started the haze craze. So, you know, they need that. And, and you know, we had talked with um, um, Kimmick. Is it John? John Kimmick with uh, Alchemist. And he had commented, he's like, if you look at it, Hetty Topper isn't even really that hazy. It's just at the time they were all crystal clear. So having any haze in there at all was he's you know he's got a got a lot of grief on it that was hazy beer and then we just went nuts with it from there so uh i think so here's the thing sweetwater ipa i i love that beer and i think if you get a fresh sweetwater ipa again like i was talking about with Pliny the other you go down to the sweetwater brewery in atlanta and you get a pint of sweetwater ipa it's a fantastic beer um however i think for significance and historical significance I think 420 would be would top IPA there. So, but it's it's a pale ale. It's not officially an it is. IPA. It is. This is my mountain, Brian. Okay. This fine, is my mountain. Fine. So yeah, there you go. so well, it's a VP. We Nate's already it's given us VP. permission to put VPs on there. So very significant. So we'll VP. slide that one yeah. in there. That's that's right. And you know, I'm thinking of some others that um like sip of sunshine. That one was oh, was, yeah. was a, a stellar beer. You've got, uh, you know, main beer company, their beers. Uh, oh, lunch got a nod. Lunch it, on there. So, nod. Yeah. And, you know, along Worthy. those lines, if I was picking Georgia beers, and I'm going to go uh, just beer, not just IPA, but I think 420 has to be on there. 420 for Georgia beer has to be on there. Uh, I'm going to say something like Hellenbach. If we're talking a Mount Rushmore beer, and for those not familiar, Friends Brewing did one of the first ones. I think they may have been the first brewery in Georgia to win a JBF medal and, uh, you know, a, a short lived brewery there. But that's one that's significant to Georgia beer. We could go back to the Marthasville in the Dogwood days, Brian, and pull some beers from them and see what's going on. But Tropicalia, that was the um, that was turning the page. That yes. was turning the page for Georgia beer. So mm -hmm. that one that one deserves a nod. You know, we may be talking different periods of Georgia beer, but it's definitely going to get uh, get a trop's got to be up there. 420 has got to be up there. I think the other positions could be debated. Uh, I asked this question on Reddit ATL beer today, and there was a lot of interesting uh, input there. One person said, see the stars. And for those who remember, oh, see the yeah. stars, the release of that, that was the first beer in Georgia that got hype from like trading, which was super hot at the time. And some of our, uh, some of our not so awesome uh, residents decided to try and, and gouge people on the trades. And so it started a lot of, uh, of chatter online, but it was, it made a lot of noise. You know, it, it made people take a look at Georgia and take a look at our beers. And to be honest, see the stars was a phenomenal beer. So uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. I think I think some of the uh, some of the spots I may just write in pencil at first, and then we can see later about filling them in. But uh, uh, I think for 
for beer everywhere, uh, Planet of the Elders definitely, you know, going to get a prime spot there. That's for sure. Uh, Georgia, 420, Tropical, you definitely have to be up there. But, you know, from there, I think another one that could be open to discussion. We did get a comment from Instagram saying that uh, that Stone IPA would be, uh, yeah, speaking can't of argue with deal, that. like that would be a, a good one. And uh, other people have did mention uh, Ballast Points IPA and that. Yeah. That took the area by storm for a minute too, and that was very significant and I think influential too. Uh, just it's it, I can see why people would add those to to their uh, their their Mount Rushmore of IPAs. So so from yeah. the Vine Pair article, the rest of the list here, um, you know, after the top four, Ballast Point Sculpin got two votes. Russian River's Blind Pig got two votes. There's a lot of uh, debate in the beer community about Blind Pig versus. Blind of the Elder. A lot of people think Blind yes. Pig is the better beer, but it got two votes. Bell's Two Hearted got got a couple mm-hmm. of votes. Fathead's Hunter got two. I, I haven't had that beer, so I can't. Speak I haven't to, either. But it got two votes, so I guess that's worth something. And then in the one vote club, we have Alpine Nelson, Main Beer Company's Lunch, Bear Republic Racer Five. That's another great one. Uh, other half, All Rawaka Everything, North Park Hot Boo. Uh, again, Ballantine IPA for Mitch Still, Alchemist Focal Banger, Lagunitas IPA, which I think is one that probably deserved, you know, for yes. significance yeah. Yeah. sake there. Uh, Dogfish Head 90 Minute. Brian, I know you mentioned that one. That's another one I think for significant stake probably needs to be a little higher up on, on the list there. And then Wicked Weeds, Freak of Nature. Got to vote as well. Uh, we had some of the beers. Yeah. We had somebody on Instagram suggest Stone IPA as well as being one of her Mount Rushmore. IPAs. Really? I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't have thought anybody would have said that, Nate. That's surprising. <laughs> you weren't paying. Nate doesn't know what Nate. I'm talking about. He doesn't. No. No. <laughs> he does. He does not know. Brian just mentioned that. He just mentioned oh. that someone said that on Instagram. So, I, well, it's okay. There's an Nate. echo. There's you an echo what? in here. It's okay. Nate's had like three <laughs> NA beers. We need to give him, we need to chill. He's, He's feeling a, a little beers. tipsy now. <laughs> and to be honest, I know there's times when I've been focused on something else and I've repeated questions that like we just talked about. I'm like, okay, you know, yeah, I was looking at it. Nate was busy checking the Instagram so he can stay in touch with people for us. So he wasn't, he wasn't listening to Brian's jibber jabber. there. No, he wasn't. That's yeah. Funny. Yep. Yep. So, guys, a couple more fun things. Brian, I didn't see anything about this article. I just see your headline here. You said Coca, the undiscovered adjunct. So, Coca as in like cocaine? Yes, yes. This okay. is this is a story we've been I, we've actually held on to for a few weeks because it's never fit in. And this week being our 420th episode, it makes the most sense to actually say something about that. It, uh, yeah, a, a Coca infused beer has recently been launched in La Paz, Bolivia. And uh, it's coca, as in the play- plant that makes cocaine. Uh, the creation of the beer was inspired by a recent decision by the World Health Organization to evaluate the nutritional and uh, potential non-narcotic benefits of the coca leaf. So they're evaluating it currently, apparently. Bolivia is the world's third largest producer of coca leaf, and it seems that they've been trying for years and years to find a way to legally export coca leaf around the world to help their economy. Inside the country, uh, coca leaf infused products are pretty common. They uh, they chew the coca leaf as a uh, alternative to coffee for a little bit of a stimulant. Uh, as to how the beer tastes, the uh, the distillery that makes it says, uh, "quote Beer can be bitter, but the sweet touch we give it with coca makes it more palatable." Unquote. Uh, if you have to be tra- traveling to Bolivia soon, you can grab a bottle for about two dollars and let us know for yourself. And please let us know if you do, because I'd really like to know what that's about. I don't imagine us in the U.S. ever getting to a point no, in the no. foreseeable future where you can put coca leaf into an alcoholic product that just, even if the one was legal, the the two together, just no way that that would happen. Not even. Have a you chance. ever seen old bottles of medicine from the U.S. like from mm-hmm. the 1800s? Mm-hmm. It's like here's here's infants cough medicine syrup. It's 47 percent heroin, 12 percent cocaine. It's like yeah. Yeah, and a light dust that, of arsenic to help yeah, them, you know, I get it clears sleep. them yeah. right up there. You know, yeah. take it. It cures what ails you, man. Yeah. You know, I wonder what the coca leaves. I know they chew them and all that. Um, I've seen the videos like a lot of the indigenous people there. They'll just be sitting around with a mouthful of of the leaves, I guess, kind of like chewing tobacco here. But it's a stimulant. Yeah. How intense is that stimulant? Because 
we've had our issues here in the States with putting stimulants in alcoholic beverages. And, uh, you know, that's dangerous. That That's dangerous territory there, man. You're keeping people hyped up and keep pumping the alcohol in. So I'm kind of curious uh, how much it is, how much, uh, how much it impacts. We'll have to watch this news for a year down the road when they're like, Coca beer has been removed from shelves. So yeah, yeah. You know, people were getting high as a kite and also drunk. So apparently in Bolivia, that's, I mean, they have it in a lot of stuff, but I don't know about, I don't know about alcoholic products, but yeah, I guess it depends on how many leaves you chew on. And if people are using that instead of coffee, and I know I like my coffee fairly strong, it must be fairly potent or you have to chew yeah. a lot of them. I, I don't know. I've, I've never tried it. So <laughs> it's, I got to say, man, I really would like to have tried an old Coca-Cola with with like the the coke in it and yes. stuff not just mm-hmm. just to see what it was about i had a teacher in high school and, and remember i'm i'm not a young guy so high school for me was the late 80s and my teacher at the time was probably in her 60s and that so i mean i don't know when they stopped nate google for it see when they took the cocaine out of coca-cola because all i know is she used to talk about it and she looked like she was just having a a a life changing experience talking about how good it was back then now, but I'm like, well, I didn't think it was in there that late, but I guess she would have been you know what nineteen twenties to thirties maybe she she could have been drinking coke, so nineteen o three okay wow okay. okay so i don't think she was no Boot-like. i don't think she, she was, was old enough stuff. She, yeah. yeah vintage <laughs> vintage <laughs> co- vintage cocaine coca cola there. I wonder if yeah. people were hoarding this stuff. I'm like, oh, they made it illegal. Go Could buy crates. Yeah. Go, go load up the mule to head to the local uh, right. market. Like rich people with alcohol when Prohibition went in or like Kennedy with cigars when they had the Cuban embargo. That's right. He, he flew he somebody did. over he to sure Cuba did, to pick man. up just a ton of Cuban cigars right before he signed the thing making it uh, illegal to, uh, to yep. import them. Yep. Yeah, he sure Fantastic. did. He <laughs> sure did, man. Crazy stuff. Crazy. Wild. Brian. As it is the summer, people are going to be taking vacation, and a common vacation destination is the beach, and a common right. beach activity is having a drink. But if I read this right, drinking on the beach is going to give me skin cancer. Yeah, there seems to be uh, there seems to be uh, changes in studies about what when beer is good for you, when beer is bad for you. This week, it's bad for you, and according to the journal, uh, the British Journal of Dermatology. Uh, it's especially bad for you when you're uh, you're heading to the beach, and it's not because you're going to get sloppy drunk and uh, forget to put sunscreen on and pass out and get a sunburn. Apparently, the research suggests that alcohol reduces the amount of time you can spend in the sun before you get a burn. And the the reason for it is still unknown, but the speculation is alcohol lowers the carotenoid count in your body. You know, them carotenoids, you need them. Uh, which in turn lowers the skin's antioxidant defenses against UV rays. The sun has a lot of UV rays, and you're going to get all of them on the beach. So if you're heading to the beach with your cooler, don't forget to bring a little shade with you, an umbrella or something like that, because it's your ability to withstand that stuff and drink at the same time is is diminished. So that's a new thing. And, uh, yeah, if you're be worried careful. about that, drink responsibly. Careful. Yeah, or shade responsibly, whichever. Shade you know. responsibly. Either yeah. drink irresponsibly, shade responsibly. So I have a uh, related story, I guess, to this. Uh, as far as I know, I don't have skin cancer yet, but I went down to Destin a few years ago, 4th of July, went down to Destin, hanging out there, and uh, caught me one of them little beach chairs uh, out back close to a bar. And I do believe I had an umbrella in my chair, but I don't think it covered all of me. And I'm fairly sure I sat out on the beach for like six hours. And the beach was a 30-second walk to the bar. So my chair was a 30-second walk to the bar at the back of this joint. And they had uh, a $3 pina colada. So I sat on the beach all day drinking pina coladas. Now... I had my shorts on. I think I had like a a muscle shirt on, but I had the umbrella cover in the top of me. What did not get covered was my lower legs and my knees. And so I'm sitting there with the, you know, in the the low chair with my knees bent up and my knees were getting hot, but I got to be honest that I didn't notice it burning. I'm just like, oh, it's hot. It's hot here, you know? 
But what happened is my tops of my knees became well done stakes there. Mm -hmm. And for the rest of the weekend, taking a step and making that flesh bend on my knees was excruciating. <laughs> and my uh, my my cousin's wife got me this gel. It was a like aloe vera and something else. And putting it on was excruciating because anything touch at all touching my knees was just painful. And this this gel was soothing, but I still had to get it on there, you know. So that was fun. And then my knees peeled. So. So, you know, maybe my point in sharing this is when I'm out, y'all keep an eye on my knees for any skin issues. And, you know, in case I don't notice it, please point that out to me so that I yeah, can check that out. We may have to just chop them off and give you peg legs, Tim. That you that's fine. Just, can I get just, some of them blade legs? Well, you know the ones I'm yeah. talking about, right? I, how good is your insurance? Because the answer is maybe. <laughs> the answer is maybe. Yeah. Depends. Depends. And I, I want to gain about a foot when I get those. Like, oh, that's like still. Yeah, that's super Blade helpful. stilts is really what I'm looking for. That's that's the easy part. You know, okay. like the, the, yeah. Just getting the blades is the, the expensive part. As a guy from the Northwest who didn't know anything about the, the sun in the South, I, oh, yeah, I think the okay. first time I went down to Florida, I got just a horrible. Hor- horrible i had all kinds of words i wanted to say a horrible horrible burn on my shoulders because i didn't realize how intense it was and it wasn't out for for too long and uh yeah i got blisters and i got i got uh, weird uh like it i got freckles for a little while i'm like man i yeah. i think i may have get like as far as i know i'm i'm fine it's it, it in any inspection I've been to the doctor, they don't, they, they don't tell me I've gotten anything. But if I do wind up getting some skin cancer, especially on my shoulders, I'm like, I know what I did. I know what I did. I know. I, I, know. I, was, okay. I'm, I was an idiot. I, I kind That's of heard on that. Me. So, yeah, it was that was intense. So, yeah, it's no yeah. joke. I, I'd say that I'd watch your shoulders for you, but I honestly hope that there's not a lot of cases where I can see your naked shoulders, Brian. <laughs> so, that's, you know, we don't do... You and I don't do stuff like the pool and all that. So there's not going to be a lot of instances where that would be appropriate, to be quite honest. But I put on extra clothing when I go to the pool just to, you know, add a modest thing. Yeah. 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 Brian, Brian's got a one piece that he likes to wear <laughs> to, the, <laughs> to the pool. <laughs> Get suspenders. I got these really yes. cool suspenders yeah. for just for swimming. You yeah. They're extra wide to cover my shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> Brian's a fashion icon. No one's ever seen this kind of uh, this kind of fashion there. Brian, we got one more story here that we want to share. So you're looking at some interesting stuff with yeast uh, in Chile. Yeah, yeah. So uh, researchers in southern Chile have created new hybrid lager yeast strains using the wild yeast they found in the bark of Patagonian trees. And uh, I had to look up Patagonia. I didn't know exactly where Patagonia is. That's the entire like southern portion of uh, the south america which includes chile and was it argentina on the other side mm-hmm. anyway so it's that whole area like really really far down there to the south uh they published their findings in the journal uh plos genetics which is actually i forget what the acronym was i looked it up but something about the library of science any public library of science anyway uh so it turns out these hybrid uh strains of yeast can produce as much if in some cases more alcohol as commercial yeast strains while generating unique aromas. According to the researchers, the hybrid strains give off a variety of aromas. Some were sweet, the unspecified sweetness. Others were spicy and clove-like, which made me think Belgian-ish. Demphenols. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. And uh, the one thing the researchers did not do was brew any actual batches of the lager with the uh, the yeast. So it remains to be seen if the beer these new yeast strains produce will actually be any good. That was the one thing, but there is potential here. So if they can, okay. they could take these yeast to from a point of where they were pretty lackadaisical about uh, fermenting out sugars to being very effective at it. If they could take them doing that, they can probably come up with a ways of breeding them to get uh, very favorable uh, flavor and aroma compounds would be my guess. So we might have some really interesting new loggers coming up very soon. I Is think that's what interests me more in the next 10 years, Brian. Not will it be NA or cannabis stuff on tap, but think back to 10 years ago when we were doing a lot of home brewing. And crazy to say, but it has been 10 years ago when uh, we kind of started home brewing. But yes. <laughs> the yeasts that are available now, those weren't that, there weren't options like that when we started no. home brewing. You know, you had uh, White Labs, Y yeast, and then is it Safel? I don't know how. 
Low, you know, safe ale, safe ale, something yeah. like that. A couple dry yeast and a couple wet yeast makers, and that was it. And now there's tons of, you know, small labs doing crazy blends and stuff like that. We've got, um, what's the Viking yeast? I'm forgetting the that like, like yeah, quite yeah, there. That, you yeah. know, totally different things. You can, we never got a chance to brew with that, Brian. We never had thialized yeast either. Yeah, we're not so, thialized. Yeah. So, so that's what I want to see. What do we get, man? What do we get from the world of hops, the world of yeast, even malts, you know, they're even looking, you know, what can they improve with efficiency there? Maybe in the future, we'll be able to use one pound of malt and get like a 30% stout or something. Wow. You know, they'll get them super efficient there. So that's what interests that me. That's great. what, that yeah. is what I want to see. Well, y'all, thank you so much for coming here and hanging out with us on Beer Guys Radio. This has been episode 420. If you like what we're doing, we'd love for you to subscribe to our podcast on any of the podcasting apps. If you really dig what we're doing, then uh, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Just go to patreon.com slash beer guys. We'll get you in our Discord chat, hang out. We'll send you some cool swag, and we'll all have a good time. So we hope that you have a good week, no matter what you do. And we want to remind you, don't forget to drink local. Cheers. Cheers.